Hi, welcome back to the series Words That Changed My Life. Here I will share with you some biblical texts that marked my life personally. If you had a chance to watch the first message on this series, you will remember that I started with Isaiah chapter 6. God has been using the words of this text to change my life because God wanted Isaiah to find peace even during a period of war and this resonates with me a lot. Please feel free to write a comment below if what I say resonates with you as well. I would love to know your thoughts. There is a kind of peace that only God can give to you. God blessed Isaiah with four different visions in one single event. Each vision is a step in the process of searching for and finding peace. Holiness, sin, purification, and service. This is the transformational process that God used to change Isaiah from a disillusioned and discouraged man into a fearless and determined prophet. The same is happening to me and I am sure it will happen to you as well. Today I'd like to talk about the first two visions of this transformational process. First of all, Isaiah had the vision of the holiness of God. Take a look at the first four verses. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him there were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the door spots and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Isaiah knew the earthly palace court of King Uzziah, its beauty, its richness, its ornaments. But now the king is dead. Peace was replaced by insecurity and conflict and sorrow. In the previous message, I spoke about the historical and political background of this text. Now God provided Isaiah with a vision of the heavenly court. No longer just the royal palace's court. No more the human and perishable court. No, now the prophet had access to the vision of the most special place. And you know what? There were seraphim in this passage. If you think this is irrelevant information, think again. Because this is an essential clue to let us know what is going on here. Seraphim belong to the highest rank among angels. And even more importantly, in the whole Bible, they are reported only here. That's right. Can you see now what situation Isaiah was in? These seraphim were not small players here, they were big fish. And the Bible says that such was the glory of God that the only form of expression they could find was to cry, Kadash Yahweh Sebaot, Melokau Haaretz Kabot. There is, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of His glory. This vision of the holiness of God was so impactful on the prophet's life that the original name of his book in Hebrew is not the book of prophet Isaiah, but Kadosh, there is holy. The term Kadosh is used 30 times throughout the Old Testament, 25 times in the book of Isaiah alone, and three times only in verse 3. Such was the glory and majesty of God witnessed by the prophet. Okay, so this is great, you may say to me, but Pastor Cleason, what does it have to do with your life? Despite all this demonstration of the splendor of the glory of God, which is terrific and impactful, why do you say this text changed your life? Okay, so let's dig into that. Isaiah learned that he should seek peace in the midst of battles. And not only battles between nations, no, but primarily personal battles, internal battles, perhaps even battles against God himself, given everything that was about to happen with the nation. Isaiah was a great prophet, but he was still a human being. And as you may know, human beings are very keen to blame God when they are facing troubles. And the same, well, the same happened to Isaiah. But when he entered the temple in grief to mourn his friend, he was given this magnificent sight. At the vision of God's holiness, Isaiah decided to seek peace. 
Why? First of all, it means that if I want to know the will of God which works in me and through me and consequently influences my family, my friends, my church, my career, my whole life, I will first need to understand, to love, and to follow what is written in the Word of God. I will need to accept that this Word is the revelation of God and God's will for my life. Why am I stressing this? Because as the religious person who attends a Christian community of faith, you may be rationally inclined to see that God is holy just because of all that is written about His holiness in the Bible, right? Well, and this is not wrong. You are fair and honest with the Bible, after all. The thing is that it is just not enough. To honestly know the holiness of God in your life, thoughts and actions, you must go beyond what is rational. You must search, you must confess and repent to experience the reality of God's holiness. Please don't get me wrong here, I love reason. I am a historian and a theologian. I've got master's degrees that were all about reason, and my PhD addresses the same thing. But although excellent and necessary, reason is not enough. Are you prepared to hear what God wants to say about your own life? Are you willing to accept what the holiness of God will show to you, not only about God himself, but also about yourself? Are you ready to see what is going to happen in your heart and mind when God illuminates everything you are and everything you have accumulated as treasure throughout your life? Do not be discouraged. God wants you to be looking for Him and finding Him not only when you are sad or disappointed, not only when you've lost one of the many battles you have faced in your life. More than that, God wants you to be close to Him all the time and every day so that you'll be guided on the path of peace. Ask God to open your heart and give you sensitivity to see His holiness. Do not run away from God. God's holiness will be the light that illuminates your life as you move towards peace. Trust me, it has happened to me. It will happen to you. This will change your life. But this biblical text has changed my life not only because of the vision of God's holiness. There was a second sight witnessed by Isaiah. And it is something we know a lot about. The second vision given to Isaiah was the vision of sin. Take a look at verse 5. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Yes, I know, this is a very unpleasant realization of our own reality and the world around us. But it's okay, that's got to happen. If, in the first place, Isaiah understood how holy God is, he now realized how much he, a human being, was a sinner. By looking at a holy God, Isaiah saw the sinner prophet. And it doesn't refer only to the mistakes Isaiah had committed that day or even throughout his lifetime, no. He saw the sinfulness in which all humanity is immersed of course, including himself. We have to get this right if we want to keep moving forward with this passage. After being shown the reality of human sinfulness, Isaiah could understand that God is far from evil. If you want to keep yourself close to God, you have to keep yourself far from evil. It's interesting to see this reality being revealed in the prophet's attitudes. Actually, it's funny. In previous chapter, Isaiah walks through the cities, listing all the mistakes and sins of people and nations. He says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions at mixing drinks, who acquit the guilty for a bribe but deny justice to the innocent. Now, when he is finally before God and witnesses all the power and glory of God's holiness, he remembers all the woes he proclaim against people and nations and can only say, Oh no, woe to me, I am ruined. 
It happened that way because it will always be that way. God's holiness shows our condition. Then sin arises and reveals itself. Then life is shown completely naked, open and accessible. The intense light of the glory of God illuminates the most hidden faults. And this is wonderful. That is why it is entirely understandable that sometimes we do not want to seek God because we know our mistake will surface as soon as we come to Him. And we want to avoid embarrassment, confrontation, discomfort. It is a natural reaction. Remember Adam hiding from God? However, even having to face the vision of human sin, Isaiah still decided to seek peace. That is what really struck me. His reaction jumped out of the text right at me and made me ask myself, is there anything else I can understand with this second vision besides the fact that I am a sinner? And then the answer to my question changed my way of seeing things. Yes, there is. God is willing to forgive. But not only that, God is ready to forgive me without my deserving it. God is willing to forgive me without my having to work on rebuilding my life with my efforts and merits. This would be too much for me to bear. I could, I could never survive such pressure and disappointment if my efforts lead me nowhere. That is why every time God leads you to see how sinful you are, this is not a bad thing. This is the beginning of a healing process. How many times have you asked God to help you to stop doing something you regret so much at the end of the day? How many times have you cried to God, please help me, heal me? This is the beginning of the healing you are waiting for. And it starts by showing you the reality of your life. God wants to let you know what the real problem is so that He can provide you with true healing. Again, you need to understand, to love and to follow what is written in the Word of God. And this is no joke. Let me share something with you from a pastor's experience. God has blessed me with the opportunity to lead many people through His Word. And this is wonderful. There are sad stories. There are lovely stories. But one thing I can tell you, generally, those who cannot see God's forgiveness cannot also see their sin. You must be prepared to be cleansed of your sins. Will this hurt a little? Sometimes, yes, but it is worth it. You probably have your own stories about it. Why don't you write some comments below? I'd love to hear about your experience. Are you prepared to correct your mistakes? fix some issues, settle some things with God and with people who God will direct you to? Are you willing to face the amount of sinfulness in your life? Are you ready to see what sin is doing with your life, with your relationship, with your plans, with your dreams? Do not be discouraged. This is not a judgmental talk. This will set you free. God wants you to be looking for and finding Him not only when you were sad or disappointed, not only when you've lost one of the many battles you have faced in life. God wants you to be before His holiness all the time, every day, so that you will be rightly guided on the path of peace. Ask God to open your heart and give you sensitivity to see everything which can be changed in your life. This is not humiliation. This is care. This is kindness. This is love. God wants you to follow His path to peace. I guess we better stop here today so that you can have some time to process and think about the first two visions given to Isaiah, the holiness of God and the sinfulness of humanity. Stay tuned for the next video for visions 3 and 4. If you like this message, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive notification for upcoming videos. You can also take this message to more people enjoying the video and sharing it with your friends. Looking forward to seeing you again in this series, Words That Changed My Life. All the best to you and your family. Bye now.